Okay, welcome everyone. Um, this is the final segment of the Responsible Gem Boutique, and we are um, saving this huge, big, exciting um, uh, announcement, person, brand um, of Mind to Market Diamonds for Last. So thank you, Martin. So excited to see what you have and hear about everything. Well, I am thrilled to be here. It is uh, some of the stuff I'm going to talk about has been a long time coming. And it's a, there's a lot more to do, that's for sure. So what I really want to do is talk about kind of a little bit where we came from and, and, and what we have right now and what the larger vision is. But basically, most of this started for me um, at the Chicago Jewelers Conference in Chicago when we were live. <clears throat> and I was talking about cutting my designs with recycled diamonds. Most of my experience has been recutting diamonds in, in my years at the bench. And I've got my own designs and, you know, I said, okay, let's use old mines and old Europeans. And since that time, the old mine, old European market just took off. And so, you know, that's almost untouchable for me as rough as well. So, so getting rough is really tough for diamond cutters. Individual guys like me um, have been my whole life. It really doesn't matter what level of my career I'm at. And so uh, one of the speakers, a woman from France, Helene, I think it is, um, she said, look, you know, recycled diamonds are one thing and Canadian diamonds are, are another thing. But what about artisanally mined diamonds? You know, that we can't get that. If we had that, then we can actually change what's going on in that sector. You know, it doesn't change anything to deal with recycled. It doesn't change anything really to deal with Canada because it's all the majors playing up there. It's all, that's all deep level mining. None of that's alluvial mining. So alluvial mining is a very different beast. And it's one that, that the big, you know, De Beers and people like that played in for a long time, but pretty much it, it's insignificant to them. It, it may be a chunk of the, of the, of the world's diamonds, but it's a small chunk. It has, it's, it's, it's incremental to their business. They don't really care. Will you yeah. will you will you tell us um, just kind of give us a visual of what alluvial diamond mining looks like in Sierra Leone? I mean, are you in a are they are people in a river? Are they sifting? What it's, is it? What does it look it's like? All, it's all it's all alluvial. It's all river born diamonds, but uh, they can be in the river. I mean, it can be guys who are actually diving down and scooping up. Uh, gravel from the bottom and bringing up trays of that, taking it to the, taking it to the bank and sifting through it and seeing what pops out. They, it, you can you can pan for it sort of like you pan for gold, and and uh, they also use uh, little boats or whatever they have, and they can float out dredge pumps and pump from the side, and and they basically bring ore out of the river. There's also dry deposits which are. Uh, ancient riverbeds that are now dry and they'll start digging in those and then they have to use water to start to erode that and and process it and stuff but it's all diamonds that that came originally from a pipe somewhere and over geologic time has has uh, washed away and in that process all of the host material that holds diamond like kimberlite and stuff like that in deep level mines that's all washed away so what you do get is crystals you, you get octahedron crystals sierra leone you get a lot of uh, octahedrons and dodecahedrons a lot of them are really pretty just the way they come out of the earth and of course it's a it's spotty i mean this is spread out over a large terrain so you can't just put a fence around it and put security guards up and own it it moves around. It's in pits. You know, you do dig a little pit, you use it up, you go to the next one. And and so the the claims are small, the claims move. Um, it, it's very small scale and it's very hard to control. And that's a lot of the problem with Zimbabwe diamonds is a lot of that's hard to control as well. You know, so that that's why the government cramps clamps down there on, you know, miners who just show up from all over all over Africa to start staking claim. And they're like, that's our natural resource. Get the hell out of here. You know, so 
uh, it's very hard to control, not like a deep level mine where you can put a fence around it, security, run workers in, hold them there, let them go uh, through security check on the way home. You know, you can bring migrant laborers. You can do all this control like South Africa is a perfect example of it. Um, but that's the same model that happens in Canada. It's the same model that happens both in Russia, all over the world. That's the big production. The small production is this alluvial. And it's it's been, you know, De Beers, there was a time they owned all of it because they bought it all, but not because they mined it. They just bought it. And they, wa they walked away from Sierra Leone years ago because it was no longer really profitable for them. So now you've got these miners. That's what they got. So they're after it. And if they can find something, that, you know, they can try and sell it. So it's one of their natural resources. It's dwindling, uh, but it's still significant. So um, anyway, uh, I could show you. It's enough to create a real livelihood for people where, you know, the other companies had left. And this is, right. like you said, this is what they've got. And, and yeah, you should show us because um, I've seen some pictures and they're amazing. And we were talking earlier um, about the smaller um, ones that you're leaving natural. And, um, and so, yeah, we let's, let's look at them and keep talking while we look. Well, I, the thing is, I don't, you know, I have some things that look like diamond rough, but I don't have any diamond rough here with me. So let's uh, talk also about, because I am lucky enough, I think maybe was it two years ago now that you were at, um, Chicago WJA and I got to see the, um, the rose cut that you developed. Mm -hmm. And so can you talk a little bit, because I, I remember just, you know, your presentation on this one cut and you're using it now in this program, um, which I find so exciting because I've been coveting one of those rose cuts since you showed it two years ago in Chicago. Well, that, I mean, so I'm, make, I'm almost finished with one. It's tiny. I mean, this came from a carat 40 piece of rough and I don't even know if you can see it. Did you, did you say 40 carat rough? 1.4 carat <laughs> and, it, and now it's you're a, on the map now now it's a half a carat you know but you can't yes. i don't have good enough uh visuals for it but essentially what it is it's a rose cut diamond on top and it's a brilliant cut diamond on the bottom so you get all the benefit out of that nice rose that comes to an apex mm -hmm. uh, of the traditional rose cut but then you get all the brilliance of a round brilliant that comes up through it and it's it's stunning i mean I can run, uh, uh, let me see if I've got this here. Here you go. Um, can I cast my screen? Yes. So to let everyone know, you're, you, you're selling your rose cuts, the signature cut that you've developed. What's the name of it again? It, my, it's called the American Rose Brilliant. An American Rose Brilliant. Plus, you're, you also have these beautiful um, diamonds that you're leaving as crystals that are smaller and no need to make them into, you know, melees or anything smaller. And they're nice. How many? So can you see this on the screen? Not yet. What do I got to do? You've got to share your screen with the bottom square arrow. Oh. Where it says present to audience. I hit that. Choose what to share. Oh. In are most of the diamonds that you're finding um, white diamonds, clear diamonds? Are you getting colored diamonds at all, like the yellows and the browns and the in the off colors? Why is this not sharing? What do I got to do? Share system wants to share the contents of your screen. It says cancel. But I, I hit share. It doesn't do anything. Um. Do well. That's no good. We don't like that. Let me cancel that. So if I say present to the audience, that's what I want to hit, right? Try it. And then it says share screen. Oh, here we go. All right. Now we're going to go out of here for a second. Oops. Come on. Let me minimize this. Can you there see this? Go. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. Um, I'm just going to 
well, anyway, so this is that rose top and then which is kind of a standard rose cut eight fold symmetry. And then on the on the bottom, I just do 16 main facets because you don't need all the busy work on the bottom. You just need a reflector on the bottom. And uh, what I'm doing, actually, I'm going to stop sharing. Um, and go back to this. OK, so what I'm doing actually for them is, is I told them um, I don't want to use this cut per se. And we're thinking of five fold symmetry. So it's 10 main facets, 10 on the bottom. And, and then you'll have um, eventually when it comes to a point, you'll have a five pointed star. And the five pointed star is really significant in the independence movements in Africa. And so we're trying to make something, a design that will source identify, you know, for instance, in this case, Sierra Leone. So, um, and we may do different designs for different people. So what I wanted to do more than anything is I'm, I'm going to be presenting, um, here's a piece of rough that, that should be fun to take a look at. I'll show you the, how can I, I love that. I love that term source identify through cut. It's just, um, in the five point star sounds amazing. So here. Um, where does, I want to share the screen. Share well, you, the screen. Well, you're working on that. So today, is there a way that um, designers can start buying the diamonds from you? Yeah, the best way for what we have right now. So can you see this now? Yeah. Okay. So this is, this was actually the very first diamond we bought. Wait, you've got something in front of, um, there you go. Here we go. And I'm going to put it in motion. This was one of the first diamonds we bought in at the market. Uh, on the way there, um, the owner, he's, he's a guy named Foss Levy. Um, he saw a, a mother and a child. And he said, you know, that image just stuck with him in the marketplace. And we saw this stone. He said right away, oh, it's a mother and child stone. So we're keeping this. This is a pretty bright yellow twinned. Beautiful crystal. yellow. Yeah. So this is going to stay as a specimen and it will stay in the collection of the company's name is Root Diamonds. Mm -hmm. And Root Diamonds is a, um, it's a initiative put together by this guy, Foss Levy. He is from Sierra Leone. To give you his background, uh, he's from Sierra Leone. He left during the conflict 20 years ago when he was 10 years old with his family. They won a lottery to uh, get a U.S. visa for the family. And so they came to the U.S. And since then, he lived in L.A. And he grew up. He's, a, he's in his 30s now. And he grew up. He... he is very computer savvy. He's very articulate. He got his master's in design from Parsons. And as part of the project for that, he went back to Sierra Leone and he interviewed his extended family lives in Sierra Leone still, and he's from the Kono mining district. And so he wants to give back. He feels very fortunate with everything he's gotten in the United States, but he wants to give back. And he came to me, this is what I was saying, you know, the the big uh, players in the industry, they go, well, what can we do? We try all this stuff in Sierra Leone and nothing works. And I said, well, why don't you ask them what they want? You know, well, he came to me saying, this is what I want. This is a vision that I have. And the vision is huge. Uh, what he's put together, he's been working on through his master's program, now in his PhD program, which is minerals and development in the third world at Carnegie Mellon. And uh, basically what it is, is to... Um, source material from from landowners from his family and other people in the Kono district Bo and Kenema and um, he has interviewed the landowners and the miners he has film of them he has interviews of what their aspirations are what you know he's just got he he shared with me a terabyte of information yesterday of slides and videos and all that stuff it's like hey yeah yeah take me months to go through it but we're busy trying to catalog that every diamond that he's purchased 
he went and bought with his with his own money and a small group of investors. Every diamond he's purchased, he can trace to the miner, to the land piece of property with photos, with the proper uh, Kimberly process papers and everything. And he has interviews with those people. So eventually um, what you'll see, and, and I'll share with you in a moment, we have a, a prototype of a website that is not ready for publication yet, but basically as a, as a retailer, for instance, or a buyer, or, or as a final consumer, you can go and click on your diamond. It'll show you the statistics of what it started out as, what it finished at, what the color and clarity is, whether or not it has a GIA certificate, Kimberly process, a picture of the miner, a bit, a bit about their story. And part of his interviews with people was to find out what would you do if you did better? You know, how can we raise the community? Because the problem with artisanal mining is it's the most colonial form of exploitation. So you're selling raw materials, uh, your raw materials without any added value done. And it does, every, all the big boys are focused on how can we get them more money? That's not the, the issue. The issue is how do they get added value? How do they take that raw material and then transform it in country to build entrepreneurship and to do the things in country that you need to do to develop your country? And you sell finished product if you can, or maybe you sell crystals to ethical jewelers in the United States, or maybe you sell finished product to ethical jewelers and let them build a brand. So he created something that he called storied diamonds, which is brilliant i mean and th this this guy he comes at it kind of not from the diamond business but from it's in his blood yep. but he needs all kinds of help but his his insights are terrific and he's connected having grown up in la he's already uh, uh networking with uh, jay-z and beyonce and and the funding Perfect. that they have available for for africa so his goal is you take canadian or, or i'm sorry sierra leone gold Sierra Leone diamonds, you process it in country. That's what he came to me for because my partner and I, after that conference I was talking about in Chicago, mm -hmm. we said, we got to reinvent this. We've got to figure out a way that instead of cutting diamonds in the United States or wherever, we need artisanal cutting at the cities or, or the towns in the diamond district. So small, shops that have four or six cutters maybe who've learned the whole process not factory workers not a big factory but an actual an actual workshop put together by local craftsmen woodworkers masons all that kind of thing so it's a community collective effort ngos involved government involved uh, private investors involved and let the community help build itself part of that training institution then will become not just, and, and, and the insight is that my partner and I are both cutters. Now with my personality, I took my passion and the cutter is the person that transforms rough into finished product. Yeah. So we're trans, we're transformation agents. And depending on your personality, do you want to sit and cut your whole life? Some people do. Some people learn that cutting and they go like me, I learned it and I've done it my whole life. But I did retail, I did wholesale, I built brands. I did, I went from the cutting wheel to the final consumer. I was a diamond wizard answering questions to the final consumer for 20 years. So I know the distribution channel from the bench to the end consumer. My partner, Mickey, his proclivity was to go to Sierra Leone, start buying locally and, and doing, he married a woman from Sierra Leone. His son is from Sierra Leone. He has an extended family there now. Um, and he's mine. He's been in the rivers. He's had dredges. He's pan. He's done the gold work. He's done. So he's from the mine to the bench. So the bench is the transforming age. In that school, we also plan to teach computer literacy and things like that so that they can take their personalities and start to develop the things they might want to do that are related to their natural resources. I love so, it. So part of what they've done then in these interviews of the miners and said, what are your aspirations? And they found, they grouped them all and they've got, you know, I want to open a bakery or I want to help my, my brother expand his mechanic shop, or I want to, you know, all their aspirations. And so their 
catering a specific training program to help enable them to do those things, to build other industries within their community. So the idea is to do that in one city first, then the next, then maybe in a different country. And, and so a, a network of small artisanal cutters that support all artisanal diamond diggers and gold miners that then go to artisanal designers and the, and his particular company root diamonds their basic goal is is they want this whole supply chain driven their target market is the african diaspora so rich africans in 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 the united kingdom in france and in particular the united states african americans so to target diamonds with a story from africa with provenance, with you know the whole thing with blockchain, everything all the way to the final consumer, targeted specifically to African Americans, and it's brilliant. I mean, nobody's doing anything yeah. even remotely associated with that. His own particular expertise. I mean, he's an expert programmer and all this stuff. He does artificial intelligence and and virtual reality stuff. Yeah. And so one of the things he wants to do is. So if you come into a shop and buy, you can put on a headset and you can become a miner. I love it. You can it. go to your, to, your, to your home and you can see how a miner lives and what tools he might need to, what he might need to sell to buy the tool he needs to do the next thing. You know, so it's all about empowerment. It's all about transparency and all of that. So that's the big goal and it it involves marketers and yeah. you know designers and re it, it, it involves everybody I'm so excited yeah. yeah and and the good news is you know we've gotten started so we got our first load of rough um, can you show us i don't know if it's on the website because it'd be great to see the website as well and if you have any stories uploaded on the website but can you also show us you sent me an image of um all of the white right. diamond crystals and I was looking for that and I'll be dang. Is it on the website too? Or take a quick tour of that too. But I, I just, I already saw, you know, I already picked some out from that photo. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go. I mean, go. it's been a long time since I've bought diamonds like that, that aren't just, you know, that aren't a um, recycled melee or that, you know, I've wanted to use as a center stone because um, I stopped, you know, buying diamonds and uncut diamonds and colored diamonds that I used to really love the natural diamonds I stopped years ago. So I'm going to uh, go here. And when I saw that picture, I was just drooling. I don't, I don't have that picture. I'm okay. Um, what, what I'm going to go to is, uh, where did I just put that? Come on, come on, come on. Here we go. I want to go to a PDF. No, I want to go to this and I want to launch. Okay, I'm going to try and share my screen again. Um, Okay, you see this? Okay, we see it. Oh, shoot. Stupid thing. We did see it. Okay, now we see it. Okay. So this is um, a soft launch thing of, of the website. And, but the basically, you know, people driven, we reveal the origin, the heritage, uh, we reveal the land miner landowner and miner and we reveal the roots mm -hmm. and his concept of course is storied diamonds uh this is a shot of the kono district in sierra leone that's where the the diamonds come from um and then where the heck is it here we go so this is now don't pay attention to the numbers because 
this is in development, but it, it'll give you an idea. So let's just say we've got this, um, you know, we've got a, I'm just going to click on a diamond. Are these your actual diamonds? Those are, but we haven't filled in all the data correctly yet to, to cover it. But basically, if you go to the diamond, uh -huh. so, so this weight and this price are wrong right now. I have a spreadsheet okay. that I can uh, work with people. And I would say anybody who's interested, please email me and we can work individually. I've, I've got the spreadsheet. We don't have all this ready for consumption. What we're trying to do is, is that we've got 30 stones finished. We're trying to sell those off. We'd love to sell some rough pieces too, because that gives us a chance to finish that buy and then use that as an example. And then uh, we actually have a trip planned for the springtime after the rains to go and buy again. But basically you'll have, it'll pop up pictures and then it'll pop up a video of that particular diamond. It will give you a picture of the miner holding the certificate of authenticity and everything um, and their name in her case uh, food catering and bakery is what is what she's interested in and you know and then this is all in in greek right now or latin or whatever but this will this will all be filled in so you can show it to your customer or we can show it to you if we're selling you a stone you know, we still have to adjust it so that loose diamond prices and and retail prices are, are separated out. Uh, but that gives you and then um, sort of his, part of his broader goal then is to these are things that uh, Roots Root Studio, which is in New York and Sierra Leone, uh, they intend on uh, donating laptop. I mean, they have things, projects uh in the future designing uh coding lessons mentorship of of people looking for professional training and different things so i mean it's very it's a very ambitious program it scales to really big heights at a certain point you know but uh, basically just to give you an idea of the scope of 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 what uh, Foss is is after. He's written a book. It's all, it's in being the final edits are being done. It'll be published soon. It's called um, Souvenirs of My. What the heck is it? Anyway, it's a it's a story about his journey from Sierra Leone. It, it's inspirational. I mean, this guy he's he's a young guy in his thirties. He's amazing just an amazing visionary and we're trying to start to put pieces of the puzzle together so you know that that's been the goal um, um so well, i i'm so excited and, I, and just um you were teasing us with the candy of that website the eye candy of the diamonds but i love the origin <laughs> story i love that you know you're hearing um you know that that the woman that you showed that was a minor wants to have a bakery you know, I think a lot of people don't um, it, it, just that little insight into how this ASM system works, that she has this diamond, this one diamond sale could help her reach a dream, you know, could help her do what she wants to do, which probably is an ASM, you know, mining. She wants to be whatever she wants to be, a baker. She wants to be an entrepreneur. And, and um, it's it's very powerful. And well, the irony right now is that yeah, you know, a lot of the world thinks if we can just get more money to these, to the people for their diamonds. And, and the reality on the ground in Sierra Leone is diamonds. If you go there to buy rough, they're expensive. And and the reason they're expensive is because it's controlled by the Lebanese trade. And a lot of those diamonds are money laundered. So yeah. it's very difficult to compete with. And they take care of the miners not on a per stone basis, but basically they take care of them, you know, so right. they provide livelihood for them. Right. So getting different. more money for the diamonds doesn't make that much difference. What makes a difference is if they have other opportunities that they can pursue around that diamond. Yeah. And so our goal, of course, we're, we're going to be cut off in a second, Martin. Okay. I'd well, love to get into the whole structure of that because you know that we could have deep dive discussions on it, but so I want everyone say, to, to no to email you because we want to help all buy this one round of diamonds so you can go back in early spring and get more. 
Exactly. And and somebody's asked the question, do I have a website and, and my email address? My website is real simple. It's AmericanDiamondCutter.com. Okay. My email address is Martin, which is spelled the Dutch way, M-A-A-R-T-E-N, at AmericanDiamondCutter.com. So if you remember AmericanDiamondCutter.com, that's all you got to remember because all the rest of it, that story of my story is in there, my contact information and all of that. So it's, I'm the American Diamond Cutter. You and, are. And it's AmericanDiamondCutter.com. Great. So, and Thank I would love to hear so from much. you and just put a little tag that you heard me or yeah. not. Just tell me you're interested in buying sincerely on diamonds. And I then can spare, uh, share spreadsheets with you and we can go through and pick some goods and, and make it happen. And that would make me happy as can be. Um, this is, this is so exciting. You know, I, I got to tell you since the last conference, we had COVID for a year, nothing happened in my trade in jewelry. It did okay. But in the diamond trade, it was dead, nothing happened. And so this, has really started up this spring. And when we got together, it was like, oh my God, he had a vision and, and me and my partner understood it 100%. And we started working together and it's just starting to roll. And I want that momentum to keep going because nobody is doing this. Yeah. Everybody yeah. wants to do it. Everybody talks about doing it. Nobody is actually putting anything like this together. And the know? designers have been waiting for it. We've been yeah, waiting for it. Can. And you know, since I've been running the conference and, you know, in, in this work, like we've said, you know, I get a text, all, you know, all these texts all the time, messages, where can I get a fair trade diamond? How can I get a mind to market diamond? And until now, there's been nothing. So I think right. you have a very excited and eager audience and hopefully um and i believe buyers as well well so. i tell you it it wakes me up in the morning and has me ready to go and at this <laughs> stage my wife's going how much are they paying you i go zero this is all because i want to do it if it does something at the end great but this this is what i went to grad school for was minerals and and development in the third world diamonds and here's FOSS come along 25 years later doing the same thing but now it's yeah. a program when i did it it was you know, wishing a prayer. So this is all you need for equipment. It's really simple. And, you know, any help we can get would be great. And so there you have it, folks. Thank you okay. so Thank much. Thank you for so the much. Yeah. And um, we just want to say tomorrow morning is bright and early, 8 a.m. Is, is Andre going on after this? We're done. Done. So it's up to me since Andre is not coming on. Tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Central Standard Time. We are hitting the ground running. We have huge panels to begin with. Um, we have um, panels talking about some issues, many things that are never talked about in the jewelry industry, never before. Hopefully they will be continue to be talked about because we need to talk about them. So please log on tomorrow morning. It's gonna be a full day of presentations packed with experts, inspiring people and people looking for change, just like Martin here. Mm -hmm.